So when I say, hey, it didn't get turned in, you'll be like, oh, Mr. Johnson, I did it, I did it. I'll be like, well, where is it? And you'll be like, it's here in my Google Drive. Bang. So when we last had class, uh, we talked about the various uh, development in North and Central and South America, okay, the uh, various indigenous cultures, and that there was, you know, there was a society going on over here. Was it the same as the European society and what was happening in Europe? Heck no, it wasn't, okay different environments, different things, but that doesn't mean that one society was less important or less advanced per se than another society, okay? So that's what was, we got that idea of what was happening in North America, Central America, and South America. But let's look at what was happening in Europe during this time period as well, all right? So what's going on in Europe? Well, Europe uh, between the uh, 1400s and 1700s was coming, and particularly during the 1400s, they were coming out of a period that was known as the Dark Ages, okay? Some of that advanced technology, advanced uh, philosophical beliefs that existed in Rome, that existed in Greece, that existed in Alexandria, uh, Egypt, okay? All that stuff had kind of fallen by the wayside for a variety of reasons that you guys probably talked about in world history. But as we hit this Renaissance period, we start to see an enlightenment. We start to see some of these technologies kind of reemerge and folks are starting to become more curious about life. It's not so much about just trying to scrape and survive and get by. It's about um, looking at science to help solve some of our problems. And we're going to see those scientific and technological advances during this time period. And humans are going to start feeling a lot better about themselves. All right, we can do some things. We can make some things happen. We can go out and explore. Okay, so that's one thing that's happening. Um, we're also going to see during this time period an event known as the Reformation. All right, and basically what we're seeing with the Reformation is a split. Okay, a split within the Catholic Church. Now, the Catholic Church during this time period was the biggest, baddest boy on the block. Okay, a lot of kings, okay, leaders of countries were beholden unto the Catholic Church. And, and it's a strange thing that when you get something that has so much power organized behind it, okay, as things start to spread out a little bit, your power structure is going to weaken up a little bit. So we've got that going on. And also when you have a lot of power going on, there's going to be an opportunity for corruption to come into play. And so some of those folks that were further away from the center of power, okay, the Vatican and Rome, all right, they're further away from that. They're going to see some of these actions of the priests and the bishops, and they're going to be like, that's not so good. That's not so good. And they're going to cause a rift. And some folks, starting with Martin Luther, is going to be like, you know what? Boom. This stuff isn't right. There are things within this system that needs to change, okay, the Reformation. We're going to reform our relationship with God, okay? We're going to reform the church. And that is going to cause all sorts of schisms down the line. Now, when I say reform, they're not going to say that there's no such thing as God. No, nah, they're going to keep that stuff. All right. But what they're going to do away with is some of the trappings and traditions that have been established within the Catholic church. And once this starts happening, it's going to happen uh, not only with the Lutherans, those who followed Martin Luther, but it's also going to happen within England. Okay. When they split from the Catholic church and we will have those folks that are following the church of England. All right. Um, Protestantism, protesting against the Catholic church. All right. So we've got, you know, this, this, this period of, 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 scientific discovery okay we've got this period of heavy religious influence and so as we're starting to develop these and these countries are starting to form each country is trying to outdo it each other okay each country wants to be a a a more powerful country than their neighbor okay and if you're a good christian based country then you want to make sure that you are more <laughs> more pious than your neighbor. And if you're a big country, well, heck, you need money where you get money. You get it from gold, all right? So we put all these things together, God, glory, and gold, all right? And we have a reason to go explore, all right? The God piece, we want to explore Christianity. We are beholden unto the Catholic Church, and we want to make sure that everybody knows how good we are, all right? Later on, around the 1500s, okay, we're going to see, and 1600s, we're going to see people being like, yeah, I'm not trying to do that, that Church of England thing. I need to do my own religious thing. And they're going to bolt, all right? So God <laughs> will get us, you know, get, get exploration happening for a variety of reasons, okay? Glory, the pride, man. I, we've got territory all over the place. We're a big old country here, okay? That piece, and then gold, like I said, money, 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 money. 
And so we start off with our age of exploration, okay? We are going to have countries such as Portugal, a little, little tiny country right over here, okay? That is based on the ocean. They're set up right on the ocean. So they are gonna be seafaring people. They're gonna go out and explore. And it's gonna be the Portuguese that are the first folks that are going to sail out and make it not only uh, a route to the southern part of Africa, Africa, okay? They're gonna chart a course to India. Woohoo! This is great for them, okay? Because prior to this time period, the Italians over here in the Mediterranean, they had trade routes that went through parts of, you know, uh, what are now uh, Turkey, the Middle East, all the way to India, and they had the they had the lock as well going up into Asia as well. They had the lock on trade goods coming in from this new uncharted part of the world. Okay, new to them, not new to the people that live there, obviously. And so, you know, they, a lot of wealth is developing in Italy. Portugal wanted some of that play. They wanted some of that action. So they're going to boom, 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 come up with a way. Now, all of a sudden, these guys in Portugal can cut out the middleman. We don't have to get the Italians involved in anything. If we want trade, guess what? Boom, boom, boom. We're going to do it on our own. All right. We're going to cut out the middleman. We're going to make more money for us. And Portugal is going to start to prosper. Now, to the east of, of Portugal is another country known as Spain, and Spain's going to be like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The Portuguese are doing it. They're spreading God. They're making money. You know, they've got some power going on. We've got to do something ourselves, okay? So we've got the, the Queen Isabella and her husband, King Ferdinand. Like, all right, we've got our country all taken care of. Life is good. Now we've got to figure out how to grow, all right? We see Portugal over here. We see Portugal over here and they are doing their thing. They've got their trade routes. Italy's got their trade routes. Well, heck man, we need to do the same exact thing. We need to get some money. We need to expand our power throughout the world. What are we gonna do, all right? Well, around the same time period, a gentleman by the name of Christopher Columbus steps into the scene, okay? Is going to the queen and king of Spain and saying, hey guys, I've got a proposition for you. You hook me up with three ships, all right? and a crew and some dollars, and I'm gonna go out and find a better trade route to India. The Portuguese got that around the Africa thing knocked down, no problem. I bet you if we keep going straight west, okay, for them it's going west to get to our east coast, we're gonna go straight west and we are going to get to India and then I'm gonna come back, all right? And so the queen and queen are like, what the heck, the guy's a little bit crazy, it's something new, but you know, we're gonna go for it. Why? God glory and gold okay you couldn't see my hand over here god glory and gold those are the reasons all right so boom 1492 columbus sails the ocean blue and heads off and lands in the caribbean thinks it's india Woo! we made it we are here in india this is going to be great fyi there's a really good little video clip right here that's hyperlinked into the presentation i can't show it to you now because it doesn't come through the right way Take some time and look at the video clip, all right? He's going to land on the, land in this area, on this island. Uh, he's going to call it San Salvador, the Holy Savior. Why did he call it the Holy Savior? Because he and his boys are about ready to die out on the Atlantic Ocean. He had totally underestimated how long it was going to take to get from point A to point B. And by the time they saw that on, they were like, thank God you saved us, okay? So we've got San Salvador. He's going to see these people walking around. He ain't never been to India. He's going to say, hey, these are some Indians. They're in India. Whoa, wait a second. He's going to realize that, no, this is not the India that he had thought that he was going to, okay? This is a whole new uncharted piece of land that nobody's ever been to from Europe, that is, okay? And he is gonna talk to these guys and these people are gonna be like, well, these other folks on the boat things, they're a little bit crazy and whatever. And Columbus is gonna realize that, dang, these people have things that we want. These people don't have the same technology that we want. And these people, we can punk really easily. And that's exactly what he's going to do, okay? He's gonna brutally mistreat the natives. Why? They ain't got the gold that he wants, okay? They don't, he doesn't need to establish a free trading agreement with them. No, he can just take it. He can brutally mistreat these people, all right? And in doing so, okay, knowingly and unknowingly, he's going to start spreading diseases that's gonna kill off a large portion of native indigenous folks throughout Central South America, all right? So we got that going on. 
Well, what's going to happen is he's going to go back to Spain and say something really good or he's going to be in all kinds of trouble. So he grabs a few things. He grabs some plant forms. He grabs some few natives and he grabs a little bit of gold that they do have. OK, and he's going to bring them back. And what he brings to the native folks, by the way, are nothing but diseases, typhus, malaria. No, they didn't have malaria, typhus, smallpox, things like that. Um, takes the natives back to Spain. OK, and tells everybody, hey, guess what? I found this great new land, right for the picking. I know there's got to be gold out here. Here's a little bit of gold, okay? We can go and find more gold. We've got these people over here who can do the work for us because they don't have the same technology that we have, all right? And folks are going to be like, all right, it's on. We've got to spread religion, okay? We've got to uh, increase our country's pride, get that glory, okay? And we have got to get that gold. And it's going to be on because not only are the Spanish going to send more ships eventually over time, but other countries are going to do the exact same thing. And what do they do? They take what they can, they bring it back, and they spread disease amongst the natives. All right. That's what we're looking at. The impact of Columbus finding this new land, okay, is just that. All right. More people are going to come over more disease is going to be spread, and eventually a trade network will be established, okay? And this trade network is going to be known as the Columbian Exchange, all right? And it's going to exist from 1500s throughout the 1800s, all right? So what, what happens? What happens? The Europeans, they're going to get all kinds of new fruit. They're going to get all kinds of new plants. They're going to get all kinds of, they are going to get wealth. I ain't going to lie about it. There's gold to be found. There's gold found all right they're gonna get all these great things and have access to these things that don't exist in europe then they're going to be able to sell that stuff and make money because you sell something you tax it boom money for the treasury money for the treasury what is the uh, the what are the americas going to get well they're going to get all kinds of things they are going to get new cattle new crops because the europeans are going to bring them over with them all right and they're going to get disease they're going to get diseases again typhus smallpox chicken pox you name it things that didn't exist all right are gonna pop back over this way. Um, and I don't have it on this particular slide. And th there's a third leg that you can add on to this Columbian exchange, and that's gonna be people, okay? The slave trade is gonna start kicking off not too long after this whole process starts. So, anywho, all right, all right. That is pretty much the main thing. You should have the guided notes form out there um, uh, from yesterday. But uh, one thing you wanna think about as you are finishing up your notes, and there's a section of the guided notes that go along with this. Think about what concept or what impact of the concept of God, gold, and glory have on the pre-Columbian Americans. What the heck happened to them after the Europeans decided to come over this way or to go, go east for them, okay, to go east to find glory, gold, and spread Christianity, all right? All right, let me pop out of here really quick.